Rem. So I have three questions for you. Okay. The first one is if you would like to introduce yourself to us and the projects you are involved on at the moment. Sure. Second is your point of view about um, the dynamics of contemporary art, especially mm -hmm. according to the, new, the, the geopolitics, how things are changing so quickly in front of us mm -hmm. and how art is facing them. And third, if there are artists that you are considering, if you want to talk about them, Most, mm -hmm. The most representative of what we are facing nowadays um, in, in the world mm -hmm. and in the contemporary world, yes. Okay. okay. So let's start with um, yourself and sure. the project you are involved on at the moment. Great. Um, so I, I work uh, currently as uh, the Associate Curator of Middle Eastern Art with the Guggenheim Foundation uh, on building their a museum project of the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi uh, that is uh, slated to uh, open in the next few years in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I've been on this project for six years and uh, I've worked um, on mainly building the strategy for its collection and hopefully exhibition making um, and the curatorial vision behind this institution. Um, and recently, I've been appointed as the curator of the Madrakish Biennial for their sixth edition. Um, and that is going to open next year in February, so very soon. But we've been doing a lot of works behind the scene, both structurally and really trying to formulate the concept and artist list for the Biennale um, and working with institutions there. So these are the two projects that I've been uh, that I'm most involved in at the current time. Okay, thank you, Rem. So you you have a kind of, uh, I would say, I would call it a privileged um, point of view. A privileged point of yes. view, I like that. <laughs> Is it possible to say that in English? Um, I don't, uh, I, what do you mean by it? Privilege means that um, you have the possibility, it's like, you know, when you open a window and you have the possibility to see many, many things. Many things, yeah, uh, like a bird's eye view. Yeah, yeah, it's very kind of, you have the possibility to um, to see and to consider what is happening worldwide because of uh, your positions. I, I, I can definitely agree with that. Um, I think largely I want to say that working with the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi has been, um, despite the the multiple kind of, you know, tremors this, um, this uh, uh, project has caused, but it really is a premise that I think um, is very unique because it's trying to build a museum in a place that does not have museums um, and has not had that history of building museums and allows for a very meticulous, and I want to say even revisionist, methodology from a Western-based institution alongside its counterparts in the East and in the Arab world to see what is the, what is the play, playing field of contemporary art. What is that large field look like? Where does it need to be corrected? And how can you look at the world at large and also criticize your own self and your own positions, that kind of Western Eurocentric position that has been taken for granted for numerous, like for century. Um, so it's, the Guggenheim Abu Dhabi has that possibility. And we're really a small working group, a curatorial working group of people, women mostly, and we've identified key um, you know, consultants and advisors and art historians and curators who we've been in conversation with across the years. And we've been asking ourselves this, th these tough questions. And that is a great opportunity. And especially that we are not just talking about these issues. So we're not just philosophizing or we're not just creating, um, uh, I want to say, hypothetical frameworks 
uh, as many academics and have profoundly written and done about these ideas. But we are actually setting a framework of collection, building, collecting, solidifying it with material evidence. So it's a very different process. I think that is what a museum of this kind in the 21st century where I know there's plenty of criticism, are museums necessary? Isn't it redundant? But this is, I would say it is crucial because there has to be a, 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 a speaking point that is that tells that history differently uh, in a more equitable fashion. Um, uh, we're not saying negating any kind of history and, you know, creating it, creating a new hierarchy and um, uh, allowing for, let's say, the voice of the East to go over the voice of the West. No. Where, how do we create equilibrium? How do you say history as it is? Of course, in the making of history, there's always um, a voice of authority that comes and there's always selective history. In the process, we are very well aware of that, but um, there is still opportunities and possibilities to make for um, equitable history. And I think this is where this project really has that possibility to do that. Um, and I um, and I'm therefore yes, I believe it's a privileged position to be in that framework um, and to have been you know part to be part of a team where you're studying the world. So I am the curator of um, um, the Middle East, but uh, that, that the Middle East is this already um, um, a very contentious term and means more than what it looks like. Um, we're already debating the term. We're already saying Middle East should not, should not be the defined geography. Let's look at Asia. So, um, and if you look at Asia, Asia is Russia, Asia is, you know, the ties with uh, the Arab world, with Turkey, with Iran, um, North Africa, and then you go to Africa. So, and then South Asia, which is a very important neighbor to the Gulf, and this museum is built in the Gulf. So it's such fluid relationships that you start to understand this place and uh, the, the diversity of geography that you're looking at in a very... Um, uh, I want to say in a deep way, um, and of course that's not conclusive to this to this region. Only my colleagues also are experts on Eastern Europe, Western Europe, um, America, South um, South America. Um, we're looking at South Asia again. I mean, we have East Asia plays a very also important role in the in, within our collection and how we're building things. So um, I think. Of course, I'm benefiting from looking at this large purview and, and understanding the diverse world in a, in a very nuanced way. Um, so I think, yes, that is a privilege. And I have to say, I would add to that, that, and this is, again, not to sound cocky or to sound, um, uh, let's say, not to sound privileged, but I, it is a privilege at this point in time, to think that we can learn from the third world. Yes, exactly. I think this is something that is very important to come to the realization that after this tumultuous time of post-colonialism and all the studies and everything that we're coming at, there is an arrival point where we, even in the midst of all of that is going uh, in front of our eyes, we have arrived at a point where the world is suffering from an amnesiac state of being, uh, a large neoliberal um, status uh, that is kind of in slumber, right? Everybody's asleep. And I think the third world is a place of privilege to be because it is still awake. Yes. It's, it it's, it's awake and it sees things. And, you know, I think I'm even more privileged because I'm Palestinian, so the colonial condition is not removed. Uh, and that laboratory allows me to see things in a very different eye. So I see all, you know, we're still in the, we're still in before the machinations of neoliberalism have fully enveloped Palestine. So 
you know, before it's enveloped all these states around us. So we can maybe propose how do you remove, how do you decolonize, how do you move away from all of that? So I think looking at the third world ecology from South America to South Asia to the Middle East, from my point of view, having revisited these histories in the collection and in thinking about the parameters of our strategy for the museum, from the 40s to this day, is, has been a learning curve for me, definitely, and for the institution I represent. Totally agree. I totally agree, Ram. And that's why I would say in privilege, I'm not saying in a, I want to be, a privilege is when you have the possibility to, to look at things from different yes. point of views. Yeah, and, uh, and, and to really kind of learn from them at the same yeah. time and, 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 and learn and teach, right? Like it's a... Yeah, it's, it's, give, it's, and it's, a, it's give and take. Yes. And then Marrakesh. Yes. So would you like to tell us something about it? For sure. Um, I, I mean, it's an exciting thing for me to get out of my museum bubble out into the real world and, um, you know, curate a biennial such as the Marrakesh Biennial. And it's really a, tur a turf that I feel very comfortable with. It's the Arab world. Marrakesh is quite beautiful as a city. It has so many similarities to many places I've inhabited. Um, and I, I feel very comfortable and very acquainted being, um, it, being involved with Marrakesh. And um, at the same time, it's, you know, it's a place for me to really uh, deal with a lot of topics and ideas that I've been, I've been thinking about for many years now and hoping to investigate further through exhibition making and working with contemporary artists. Um, I have a title for Marrakesh, so it's not new now. And the, although the concept has not fully flourished and developed, and this still requires a lot of work to sort of engage with the artists that I have known and, and I'm continue, continuing to research and wanting, wanting to add to that roster, but I want to say that it, it is really tackling some of the most kind of troublesome topics that have um, that have really um, uh, troubled me, if you want, because I think I work in art not because it gives me solutions. It allows me to think further, right? To be that thought-provoking uh, um, uh, um, field that allows me to contemplate on the world around me. And I want to say that some of the things that have been big concerns of mine are, you know, issues about the, the idea of the new for me is something that I want to look into and contemplate because in a, if you want in a modern and in the legacy of the modern and in the legacy of the postmodern, the new has not been fully criticized, has not, has not eradicated from our consumptive society. And I feel that this is still an area that needs interrogating. And, and maybe by doing that, we really start to question, where is art going? Mm -hmm. And where is art going, Rem? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to see where, what are the other vocabularies that, I'm not saying that I'm going to be capable of renunciating the new, that's not, where, because, you know, I'm part of a system that is largely around me and, um, and, and it's not, and I admit my defeat from the onset, but I'm just saying I want to, um, I want to be defeated by the new, I want to defeat the new, I want to look at it and, and, and really explore it. There are two things for me at this state um, uh, that are really the new allows for as well as it allows me to look at the at constant time because I feel that we are caught temporal moments, either the future or the past. And I am really asking the question about what is now. So I think this is where um, when I... 
I really want to look at this period of the now and the role of artists and the interrogators and creative uh, people out there and the interlocutors, be they architects, urban planners, city developers, how, how are we looking at today? Um, so this is something that I think my tool allows me to look at all of these things. Um, so this is a little bit of a, uh, a, uh, a synopsis on where the direction of the title is going. Another thing that I wanted to say is I'm unabashedly making this um, Afro-Asian axis uh, for a biennial. My, um, of course, my knowledge is not limited and I deal with many fantastic artists from all over the world. And that is not going to be exclusive, but I think the majority for people who will visit Marrakesh are going to see artists from the Arab and the African world. This is something I cannot be ashamed of. It's just who I am and it's my knowledge base and this is what I want to present. And uh, is it possible for you to give us some names of artists that you are working with that you can see um, really represent? I am afraid that's a little bit too early <laughs> because it's, I mean, I'm still in very early conversations with a lot of people. So it's not, I, you know, there's many people that I've had fantastic debates with, um, both locally and um, elsewhere. And I, I don't know yet the level of commitment, so I don't know if I can answer that question just yet. Yeah, but not regarding only the Marrakesh Biennial, but perhaps there are some artists you are working with, or you have been working with recently, and you consider that they are very representative of what you're talking about, of, what, of the issues sure. we are dealing with. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, yeah, definitely. I mean, some of, another kind of important thing for me that I've been very much researching is this idea of use value in art and how much art could be of use for society. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I can definitely say that um, this is something that I would hopefully explore within the biennial, within all of these parameters, but uh, there are a couple of artists that I've long been associated with and I've worked with quite in depth. Um, for example, Decolonizing Architecture, yeah. the collective, is uh, are a group that I've been very much advocate of and at the same time a big supporter and a collaborator with them. Um, I find their um, uh, their practice to be invigorating and very important and essential to the expansion of what art is for society. Um, how much the creative um, individual and the creative collective can insert itself within society and create useful frameworks that become part and parcel of how we live. I think that is a very important model for us to re-examine and think what art should be. So that's one thing. And uh, another um, group is Superflex, and it's no wonder I'm very much drawn to collectives, I have to say, because I think there's something to be said about the authorship that disappears and therefore becomes something more um, communal and societal. And I find that to be also very refreshing. Um, and uh, Superflex are, have, have done s several very unique projects thinking about, you know, creative design, be it societal engagement design or urban planning design um, or even object design that really is, it, it, it has a, a level of engagement that is also insertive and uh, critical and very important for the societies they look at. Um, and very useful. And I like that use value that they are advocating for um, and releasing the object from its uh, rudimentary uh, sort of uh, uh, disassociation to use in art. I think that's something they bring very forwardly and very importantly. Um, uh, another, I recently uh, got to meet and know about uh, a young architect. His name is Khaled Malas. And he's worked on several very important uh, um, architectural interventionist projects. Um, for example, he, uh, he recently found out that there are, um, there are there's uh, th this, um, uh, this small initiative through workers in Syria that we're trying to create an electrical mill um, through the use of recycled materials 
that they would be able to um, develop electricity for their, you know, local use because of the, all of the atrocities that is happening around them. And he then just, he, he just stepped in as a facilitator for them to think with them on um, the structure of these mills and also how to make these mills happen for necessary institutions and places and work as an advocate um, to facilitate these projects happening. And I find that to be the most fantastic thing an art artist or um, a cre creative personality can do at, in times of crisis. This is where we can become the most effective. So these are examples. Yeah. That's great. Um, would you like to add something, perhaps something that you know that you would like to highlight, or things that you have been going through recently, or? Um, I mean, uh, I, uh, I I can't think of um, um, things that have been going on recently in my mind. There's uh, there's like so many hats on my head, so I just don't know which one to. To discuss, but um, actually, one thing that I want to say is that I, and for, th this is something that a lot of people know about me, but the socio political framework is never removed from my curatorial, um, let's say, um, way of being or how I develop my ideas. Um, the, the social contexts, uh, the political contexts are things that I constantly take into consideration when I move into any project or how I deal with works um, um, of them. Another thing that I find has become a part of way of something that I've always been invested in doing is also institution building. Um, because I'm, I, I'm not someone who, I'm a very much a realist and I don't, I'm not invested in the momentary exhibition. <laughs> I am not invested in um, just uh, things that are ephemeral, if you want that. Yeah. Um, I, I hope to build in on, uh, an art uh, environment that is about accumulation of immaterial um, history, right? All these efforts that build up to something. I'm uh, uh, really trying and hoping that these are some of the efforts. I mean, even my involvement with Marrakesh Biennial at this time is, is hoping to restructure the Biennial and help the team there build a platform that is from Moroccan, a Moroccan kind of base. Um, our previous founder, um, uh, our founder was Vanessa Branson and she had taken this institution for like 10 years and really developed it to the point that she could, or could do and with the recent patronage from the king, it was really kind of handed over back to the society. And I was invited within this opportunity to say, how do we create a framework for this city and for this, the development of this biennial that is it, very unique because it's a place where it's always public, um, uh, 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 public institutions that host um, this, this biennial. So it's, uh, it's very much part of the city and in the city itself. Um, and how can the entire region own up to having a biennial this caliber um, for it? And um, this region, again, is an expansive region. It's, you know, the Mediterranean, it's Africa, it's the Middle East, it's the Arab world. So there's a lot to, like, think about and help set up a, a model that hopefully will be a successful one for years to come. Okay, then. Okay. I think that for the moment we have done a good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rem.